making a box today. This is Chris. What's up guys? We're gonna put some <laughs> hard drives in it. Maybe some LEDs, I don't know. Let's cut some dovetails, or actually, Chris is gonna cut dovetails. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm gonna figure out the electronics so that we can hook up all these hard drives and have a little switch for them. So this is going to be a box to house all of my external hard drives. And I have about 20 to 25 four terabyte hard drives that I keep all of my footage on. And keeping track of all of them has been pretty difficult over the years. So I reached out to my buddy Chris from Cow Dog Craftworks for help. Now, Chris lives in Florida and I live in Chicago. So getting together was a little bit challenging, but he was nice enough to fly up and help me design a box that will not only hold all of my hard drives, but give me the ability to use it as a splitter so I can access all of them anytime I want. So the idea here is that initially we were going to do half blind dovetails where you only see them from the front and the back side you don't. Uh, but we kind of changed our mind. So we're gonna go ahead and plane out this backing completely, make the box thinner and see if that works. But first we need to stabilize some of these cracks because, you know, Chris is not a very good one. Absolutely true. <laughs> so here I'm using a little bit of CA glue with an activator to stabilize the walnut that we're using. Chris spent the entire day cutting these half blind dovetails and we were worried that some of the cracks in the wood might actually make the dovetails blow out when we run them through the plane. But everything turned out great and we can start milling the contrasting maple for the top and bottom of the box. All right guys, so Chris is over there. He's cutting out the dovetails, doing a great job. And I'm gonna start working on the top. Yesterday, I cut out a couple of pieces of hard maple and I glued them together because I thought that's what's gonna work for us. But I ended up finding this beautiful piece of curly maple that is just spectacular. And I'm gonna use that instead. And hopefully that works. After breaking the long board down at the miter saw, I took it over to the joiner to make sure I have two sides flat that are square to each other. This piece is going to be the top of the box, the part that needs to sit completely flat. So taking a little bit more time here will make it a lot easier for us down the road. Because the box is so chunky. Mm -hmm. Point too, mm -hmm. which will sort of give that like elevated lightness since you know the box uh, in and of itself is so chunky. Get it, let's get it. Come on, Chris. <laughs> Come on, shake it out, shake it out. <laughs> Alright guys, so we are in day three of the build and we've gotten the box pretty much to the point where Chris can go home. Or at least Chris has gotten the box to the point where he can go home. Well, you know, all the real woodwork's done, so. This is know, true. I'm free to leave now. So there's gonna be a lot of Zoom calls in the next couple of days, just so I don't mess this thing up. But we got some CNC work to do, some electronic work, and I think Chris, I'm, you can go home. Yeah, I'm pretty much done. And don't forget the LEDs, because we gotta make this thing pop, you know. Yeah, gotta have LEDs. So I don't know how we pulled this off, but somehow, and just by luck of the draw, this point right here where the pole, I guess, starts or stops is exactly the point where this like more uh, aggressive tapering uh, also starts. Oh, I did that on purpose. Oh yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. It gives us like a totally different look. All right, so Chris just left and he's on his way back to sunny Florida. That means we have to figure out the electronics all on our own. I picked up a few of these splitters that hopefully will allow us to change whichever hard drive we want to use at the time. More importantly, we're going to try to do this all in a pair of Crocs. Yeah, a pair of Crocs, because I don't know if you guys know, but Chris wears Crocs all day long, every day. I don't think he even owns a pair of work boots. It's a little weird, but let's crock it out. 
After testing a couple of USB splitters, I found this one that lights up with each switch and has a little lip to it that I can actually recess into the box and if done right, it's going to be flush with it. I did however have to buy a couple of 90 degree connectors so that I can plug the hard drives in from the back instead of from the bottom like it was designed. So a little modification. And to get this recess right so that it fits perfectly into that box, um, you can do it by hand, you can totally do that. It might not be absolutely perfect, but I want this thing to look like it came from the factory. So I have a CNC, but we're gonna try it on the CNC first and then we'll go from there. With a couple of test runs on the robot, I think I'm ready to cut this thing out. But first, I have to take apart the box. And apparently, Chris built it a little too well. I'm like super nervous to cut this out because if I don't get this right, Chris is gonna have to fly his butt back down here from Florida and cut another one of these. So let's not screw it up. Have success. Got to carve the back of it, and we can stick our electronics in. After getting the splitter fitted into the box, all I have to do now is route out the slot for the cord that sits inside of it. And then I can move on to pouring the epoxy in the cutouts for the lights. And of course, I'm using Totobo epoxy for this. This is going to be a super thin pour, just enough to diffuse the light from the splitter. And their high performance epoxy is gonna work perfect for it. It sets up quick and I get perfect results every single time. Okay. Should I test fit this? Yeah. Chris did his job. I did test fit it. I always test fit stuff. The last thing you want is to put glue on something and find out it doesn't fit. I think we've all been there with something to that effect, but learning from our mistakes is what makes us better. So yeah, test fit a lot. With the box done and sanded up, we can turn our attention to putting in those LEDs that Chris wanted. I ended up getting a slot cutting bit for the router and just set the box upside down on it and cut an eighth inch slot. This is going to give me enough room to insert a pinstriping LED light that will later be connected to the splitter using a USB plug.
All right, now to figure out how to insert those hard drives into the box. And I, honestly, I kind of been dreading this and postponing this process because I didn't know how to do it because they still have to look presentable and have cable management underneath them for all the cables. For the top, I decided to go with Kaizen foam and I was able to cut all the inserts out on my laser. Now I was only able to get about inch and a half thick foam, so I did have to cut out three separate um, inserts and cut out each single one on the laser. But it still ended up working. The only one that I had to worry about and make sure it was perfect is the top one that you know everyone sees. And then I can cut out the bevel that matches the box over at the bandsaw. And for the bottom, I matched a piece of plywood to the inserts and elevated it using a couple of wooden blocks for cable management under the inserts. This is all gonna make sense in just a little bit, I promise. I know it looks weird, but it will, it will make sense. All right, so the box is pretty much done. Now we can finally put on some finish onto this thing and I'm going with Gleam 2.0 in satin and again this is from Totable. Gleam is a marine spar varnish and I've used it over and over on multiple projects over the years and every time it dries I'm amazed of how well this thing levels out. I have yet to find a way to mess up this finish. Whether you spray, roll, brush it, it really doesn't matter. It's perfect every single time. All right guys, so this project is done and I'm really excited because now I have access to all of my hard drives in one place without having to look for them. The splitter is connected directly to my computer via USB drive. All I have to do is select the one that I want to use and it's gonna pop up on my computer. With all the footage that I shoot now being 4K, I go through a lot of hard drives and having something that's organized and all of my hard drives in one box is a game changer for me. Now I know that there's 12 drives in there, but six electronic slots. So down the road, I'm planning on installing a second splitter on the side of this box, or if I can find one with 12 slots, that would be even better. I can just take that one out, route out a new slot, and have access to all of my drives. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video because this was my first collaboration. Chris is a true woodworker and I just had a blast learning from him and just having fun with someone else that's in the shop because 
I'm by myself all the time, so having another person in the shop makes a world of difference. So make sure you guys check out his video linked right here or in the description below. And don't forget to give him a follow on all the social media platforms. You won't be disappointed. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I'll see you guys next time. Going crazy? You go push the button. Oh, it wants to work now, huh? That's, it just didn't light the snow. It's a Florida camera. <laughs>